Hey guys, how you doing? This is your boy Rich from Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Joel Gerlach, the core contributor for Axion Network with a new project today, Warp. How you doing Warp. today, Joel? I'm doing so good, dude. I love your new studio, the Bitcoin, the ticker. It looks so good. Oh man, I love I need, Bitcoin. I need a studio like you. I'm still in my bedroom. <laughs> hey, you know what? I love Bitcoin. I love cryptocurrencies. I love DeFi. I love NFTs. I love the metaverse. I love Web 3.0. I love everything that's happening. It just feels like it's evolving so quickly. So tell us about this new project, Warp. Can you tell us how you got involved with Warp and who's the team behind Warp? Yeah, so uh, Warp is an exciting new fork of the Olympus DAO protocol, um, and it adds in a whole new element, a gamification element, and a sci-fi wrap around Warp um, wow. that, that makes it one of the most unique ohm forks out there. Um, we're really excited about it, really excited to bring it to you. Um, a lot of members of the team behind Axion, you know, long-term staking project, we're taking everything that we've learned from Axion, the NFT bonds or NFT stakes, NFT bonds, creating NFT utility NFTs as well, um, but then like that long-term staking mindset, and, and we're bringing it to the Olympus DAO. And we've done it in a way that doesn't just iterate, but it entirely re-envisions it. Um, so this is a project that, that we're really excited about. You know, we have a history of, of running Axion for over a year um, and, and evolving that ecosystem and making it one of the best staking tokens out there. So now we're taking that really into this Web3, the whole metaverse theory, all of that stuff is coming together. And I am I'm so excited about it. It's a really cool project and we can't wait till, till everybody kind of gets the chance to to see really what makes it unique yeah and if you guys are looking for warp you can go and find their website at warp.bond now this is the symbol w-a-r-p and what are you building and why joel yeah so let me um i'm just going to go ahead and, and share my screen uh, so that you guys can kind of take a look at uh, basically what we're doing um so as you can see here uh this is kind of our main website our idea is creating the idea of bonds, right? And this is kind of what separates Ohm and the Olympus DAO currency uh, from other crypto projects. And just a quick top level overview, I'll show you kind of the, the Olympus DAO for people who are unfamiliar. But the main idea behind what Olympus DAO does is that it takes, it allows you to buy the token at a discount by exchanging a stable currency for it. So DAI, um, USDC, USDT, etc. And then you, or, or also distributing uh, or depositing your LP tokens as well. Um, and what happens is when you deposit these tokens to buy a bond, that's put inside of the treasury. And what the treasury does is the treasury backs the token. So with a lot of these other crypto projects, you basically end up with a, uh, a currency that is backed through the liquidity pool. Um, but if you have people coming in and selling, then you have a lot more of the token and a lot less of the, the other pairing that's backing it. With Olympus and Olympus DAO, you actually have bonds and these, these tokens or sorry, the stable coins themselves backing the project. So right now in Olympus wow. DAO, they have almost $700 million backing the project, which is amazing, right? Wow. That, that gives investors uh, a lot of, uh, it gives them a lot of, a sense of security in that investment, knowing that this isn't, you know, a whales game where somebody can come in and dump a bunch of tokens and then all of a sudden all the value goes down. There is still a liquidity pool. There is still an exchange where you can buy and sell that token, but that token is backed by the treasury. And the treasury is what gives that token that long lasting stability power as a reserve currency. Um, and that's really cool. That's a really unique thing. It's it's really the evolution in a sense. A lot of people are calling Ohm and Olympus Dow the DeFi 2.0. Know, and they've kind of ushered that in. And so what we are doing is we're taking that model and we're expanding upon it by adding in all the elements of metaverse, game theory, a sci-fi storyline that's a part of it. And we're incentivizing people to continue to bond, which helps continue to build that treasury. And let me explain to you kind of how it works. I'm going to share my screen again. I think this is game changing because one of the biggest things that everybody talks about with crypto when you compare it to the stock market is that most of these cryptos never ever had any equity to back them. Mm -hmm. Well, that is changed now because we're talking about an asset that has almost 700 million in the bank to back them. 
to back them. Exactly. And that That's is huge. huge. It's a, it's wow. a game changer for DeFi. Uh, so here's, here's our warp website. Really proud of it. Um, warp re envisions the protocols of sci-fi metaverse build starship NFTs using bonds and travel to different star systems representing multiple staking pools. Uh, so this really here is what set warps. So is what sets warp apart. So there's been other ohm forks. Um, Jade uh, is a good example. That one has done really well, but they're basically just taking the, the ohm protocol, which is open source and they're kind of changing the colors around with it and maybe doing some stuff like um, airdrops or you know other burns or something like that that can kind of make it slightly a different take what we're doing is we've completely changed all of that and we've evolved um into something bigger and that is through the, the starship nfts so basically the way that staking works is when you create a bond your bond is slowly released to you over five days that standard olympus style you buy a bond at a discount five days later you get all of it it's slowly dripped to you um, but then what you can do is you can take that slow drip and you can stake it for additional rewards now in olympus dow you only have one staking pool which means that the more people that are involved in the project the more people staking their tokens the less returns you get because it's being that pool is being more and more diluted with warp what we're doing is we've created uh, what we're calling warp seasons and inside of warp seasons people can th there will be new planets that are released every 15 days or every three wow. bond cycles that represent multiple staking pools and wow. this is what's genius it's kind of shown a little bit by this you know traveling starship is that everybody will start out on earth everyone can stake on earth that's not a, you know that's that's a part of the ecosystem you don't have to have a starship in order to be able to uh, participate in the ecosystem but for for those warp captains who have starships, they're going to be able to choose to travel to another planet representing another staking pool. And they're going to be able to start to chase the APY to get a maximum return on their staked tokens. And this is an absolute game changer. No other, no other OM project out there, OM Fork has, has introduced multiple staking pools. We're the first ones to do it and we're doing it in a really awesome way. So you spend wow. fuel cell NFTs to power your ships. You travel to different solar systems. Each one has their own APY bonus. And then the, then, then the first people to arrive will get to claim them. I mean, if you're the first 20 to 100 to 1,000 people on a new planet, your APY is absolutely insane because you're taking advantage of the bonuses of a huge pool. Now, the game theory comes into play because what if there is a mass exodus from Earth to Proxima B, for example, in the Alpha Centauri system, what's going to happen to Earth? Well, the, the APY on Earth is going to start to go up as there's less and less people. So the game theory of deciding, do I want to stay? Do I want to go? Once all planets are released there's going to be five total planets in the first season there's going to be people on planet five who come back to check on their stakes and they're going to say oh wow hey wait a minute planet three has got a way better apy because there's less people on planet three they're going to leave to go to planet three when meanwhile somebody on planet two is looking at planet five and going hey the apy is dropping on planet five i'm going to head over there and it creates this dynamic um, evolving ecosystem where people get to choose where they want to stake, where they want to stay, where they want to go. And all of it, every single thing within the ecosystem is being driven by bonding. So we have NFT bonds, um, but when you spend $250 or more, you generate a Starship part NFT. And the Starship parts are what create Starships, it's what creates fuel cells, which allows you to travel between planets. And what does that mean? Well, every single time somebody spends $250 to put to buy a Starship part because they want to participate in the ecosystem, they want to travel from planet to planet, yada, yada. What's happening to that $250? It's being put in the treasury. And that treasury is backing the token, which means that every single time somebody wants to take advantage of the ecosystem, they're doing it in a way that creates a long-term staying power for warp as a reserve currency. So they're getting warp tokens. The, these NFTs are on top of the bonding. You're getting warp at a discount, which means you're automatically returning an ROI. You're getting Starship parts NFTs, which you can use to build starships, or you can sell them on OpenSea to other captains who need them. And you're building a reserve currency to back the token. I mean, it's like, it's win, win, win for everybody. Um, if I was new to this, how would you say warp works? What's the easiest way to explain warp to someone yeah. that's new? So warp is a, a project by which everyone gets to mutually benefit through the building of a treasury. 
It's right. all about the treasury. It's not about just you know buying the token and, and letting it rise up in, in price. Because as you guys know, with crypto, tokens rise. The people who are in there at the beginning, they dump, you know, and it's just like, that's just the life cycle and evolution of a lot of these projects. Um, through the mutual building of a treasury and through the rewards that are distributed through staking, it incentivizes people to come in and stick around. Because the people who are sticking around are taking advantage of the backing of the treasury, as well as the appreciation of the token itself through getting, you know, an ROI distributed to you in terms of those rewards. The cool thing is that in in Ohm, and we've actually we've uh, right now Ohm. Uh, the own protocol if uh, bond discounts have to be set manually. So somebody goes in and they set a bond discount at 20% off of you know the price. So let's say that you know the price of, of warp is hundred dollars. If there's a 20, you know, a 20% discount, then you're buying warp at $80 um, you know, as, as a part of that thing. Um, well, what happens is with, with Ohm and with, with Jade and some of these other projects, the developers have to go in and manually set the bond discount. Um, so if there's a, a big fluctuation in price and that bond discount isn't dynamically updated, then bonds can end up being sold for really cheap, which over mints the token. With Warp, we've created a bond system that is dynamic based on price. So it will make sure, again, kind of that long-term staking background that we have from Axiom, make sure that we're not over minting the project um, making sure that tokens are being um, distributed according to the economic conditions and that it's be all being happening automatically. Why is that a big deal? It's a big deal because investors who come in, knowing that they're going to enter into an ecosystem that as people are participating, it's stabilizing itself. It's automatically stabilizing itself. And the way that Ohm works is every eight hours, there's what's called a rebase. And that's when, in a sense, the books are balanced. If you think about an accountant looking at it and saying, okay, we've, we've lent out a little bit too much over here. We need to back it off. Imagine having an accountant working every eight hours who says, okay, we've, we've, uh, the inflation rate is too high. We're going to back it down. Um, we're going to distribute the, rewar the rewards to people, and we're going to change the price of bonds, you know, this, this, and this. Um, that's happening every eight hours as a part of own protocol. We've taken it with that dynamic bond manager um, to kind of the next level, which means that every eight hours as the tokens are being distributed, everybody who's participating in the rewards are not going to be just getting too much rewards for the ecosystem to handle. And that's, it's, it's really is kind of that evolution of, of the DeFi world with, with something like, you know, a staking token, you're getting that fixed rate APY or maybe that fluctuating rate APY, but the books aren't being balanced by somebody unless there's, you know, economists or the developing team going, oh, we need to back this off with, with warp every eight hours that's happening. So it really creates that, that stable environment for people to invest in. And we have all the cool Starship stuff and multiple staking pools and all that jazz. There has been a wave of Olympus Dow forks. What makes you different? Yeah. Kind of as I mentioned at the at the top, um, and I'll go ahead and share my screen again. Um, you know, we have the uh, the multiple staking pools. That's huge for us. The dynamic bond manager. Uh, the fact that we have bonds as NFTs. Technically speaking, if you have a five day bond, you can sell your bond as an NFT um, for somebody else who wants to buy it. I don't know why you'd want to do that. You want your bond. It's going to be an amazing project, but you can, if you need to get your money out, you can sell that bond as an NFT while it's still active. Um, and then we have really through the, through the starships themselves, and I'll just uh, kind of show you here, the starships incentivize building bonds with Warp and with, uh, sorry, with, with Olympus Dow and some of these other um, ohm forks. Um, you, you want to build bonds because you kind of want to be altruistic, right? You want to be a part of something that is, is growing that treasury, but there's not really an incentive um, for people to continue to be making bonds. With Warp, the fact that we're allowing people to chase the APY to get huge returns on their Warp tokens by building starships, fueling them with fuel cells, and then um, expending those fuel cells to travel, all of those things have to be done through bonding. So if somebody comes in, they want a starship, they want to build their own ship, they want to travel around in that ship, they have to do it using bonds. Um, and so that means there is an incentive to always be building that treasury. Um, and if I scroll down here, you can see here's our season one starships. Um, so each starship is built using a whole bridge or engine NFT piece. They're fueled using fuel cells. And then they generate these different uh, starships. Um, I did all starship designs in my background in visual effects. Um, and they're all really, really freaking cool. Um, if I show over here, uh, this is kind of our, our, um, our uh, sign up contest that, that we have going on right now. And you can see, um, you know, these starship values, basically, if, if it creates two, if you got, 
if it costs two hundred fifty dollars in a bond to create a starship, then these starships are worth a thousand dollar minimum, right? As a part wow. of a way, plus whatever you know, uh, the value comes from the rarity. You know, with with these ten thousand starships that are being created, each one also has rarity components, and so you might get like here. This is my favorite. Uh, I can't wait to reveal it to the community. It's a pirate ship that's got engines bolted to it, and the wow. the, the sails are solar panels. I mean, it's. It's That's incredible. Really, really cool. Um, and these are going to be an exclusive mint. So not only do you have these uh, these starships that are created using bonds, um, but then also they have their own rarity components. So you might get this the ship, uh, the pirate ship, for example, and you want to sell it on OpenSea. Well, that might be worth a lot more than a thousand dollars, right? If you are, oh, yeah. um, if you have something that is, there's only be five hundred of these guys, you know, out of the ten thousand mints for everything else. Um, so basically, kind of what that means is that with with people getting these starships, they're also going to be able to buy and sell starships on OpenSea, which means there's going to be a thriving secondary marketplace. Like, let's say, you know, you end up with two whole pieces and you need an engine piece. Uh, you've bonded $250. You've gotten this NFT on top of it. You can sell this NFT for whatever the market's going. Let's say it is $250. You've got now an additional $250. You can go buy an engine part, or maybe you don't need one because you have a Starship. It's adding that additional value on top of the bond that you've already gotten for a discount. So the ROI opportunities for people who want to participate in the ecosystem and continue to participate. I mean, if you think about it, uh, after the 30,000 parts, because there's 10,000 starships, 30,000 or three parts to make it, after those 30,000 parts are minted, the fuel cells are going to be the things that are remaining. Those will just continue to be minted until the next uh, season comes out, revealing new ships, new planets, all that stuff. Um, which means that there's going to be an opportunity for people to start farming fuel cells. They're going to be able to take these fuel cells because captains are going to want to travel from planet to planet, right? So somebody's going to be creating a $250 bond, getting already getting an ROI from the from the discounted bond, and they get a fuel cell that now they can sell on OpenSea. Some other captain wants to get from planet one to planet four. He's going to buy that fuel cell because he needs it. And all of a sudden, now people are farming fuel cells to sell to other captains. And every time they, they bond, they're, ba they're building a treasury that backs the token. You know, so it's just like the whole ecosystem, everything around it is is built to incentivize participation, incentivize building that treasury and doing it, doing so in a way that, you know, is really cool. And we're doing a fair launch. I mean, we, we didn't really you and I didn't chat about this a little bit, but but we're not doing a presale. Um, we're not doing any IDOs or IEOs. Um, we're not distributing. I mean, even, you know, the stuff we're doing here, we didn't pay you in warp tokens. You know, like we are 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 doing it in a way that gives all captains, everybody who wants to come to the ecosystem, a fair chance to start off. We're not gonna, we're not selling this, you know, selling tokens at a discount. So when we launch, everybody's gonna be able to participate in the ecosystem that they own. I mean, this is the crazy thing. We as developers, we're not giving ourselves any warp tokens. I will have to go and buy my own warp tokens wow. if I want to take advantage of it. So there really is that incentive of all of us are in this together. We're all building a really cool project and you know through like the contests and stuff that we are kind of here which i think oh that i have it oh yeah um here you know this is uh like for example our, our partnership with polygon we're an official partner of polygon they're promoting warp for us they're really excited about having a really cool ohm uh ecosystem come to polygon um and you can see we have custom starships built for that community so the polygon community is to come they get a they get a sign up through the, you know, they generate their referral links, have a chance to win a custom, beautiful Polygon Starship that's going to be the only one in existence. Um, and all of it is is just creating a thing where we don't have a, a, a tokenomics problem of giving away warp tokens or selling warp tokens before the project launches. So I think that's brilliant because obviously if people get in early, then the people that get in next typically the people that are getting in early are selling to the next wave of people. Mm -hmm. So like you said, it, it sometimes creates an unfair advantage to the early investors. Now you've been talking a lot about starships. Can, let's get into a little bit more because mm -hmm. I'm really excited about this. I know you are and you developed it. So uh, let's talk about it. Starships are going to be an incredibly important economic resource in Warp. What are they and why are they so important? Yeah, so the starships are are basically like keys to unlocking different staking pools. Uh, okay. So so if you're on Earth, right, um, you don't have a starship, you can take the warp that you've bought or that you've earned through bonding, and you can stake it, and you're going to get an APY on it because staking rewards people who keep their tokens, right? That's yes. the basis of staking. Yes. But starships allow you to take your ship 
and travel between planets representing that multiple staking pools. And you can only stake on that planet if the smart contracts behind the ecosystem detect that your, that your starship is there. So that starship, you know, if you want to talk about the, the dev side of things, the starship NFTs themselves are going to be, uh, will have variables in them that get updated by the contract. So if you travel from planet, from Earth to planet three, we're not revealing the names of planets. That's why I'm just saying planet one, two, three. So we travel to planet three, right? That NFT metadata is going to get updated to say, hey, this starship is now on planet three. A cool side note is if you sell your starship on planet three and somebody else buys it, they're going to get that starship at that planet, which is kind of cool, right? So you you might be able to buy. The other thing to mention is that you can have multiple starships. So if you're you know a super wealthy investor, you want to have a starship on every planet, you can have five starships and have one on every single planet and take advantage of staking, you know, on all those wow. planets. Um, but the cool thing is when you travel from planet from Earth to planet three, the entire time you're traveling, because it does take time to travel between planets, 24 hours you know, between adjacent planets at the slowest speeds, um, you, you're still, your tokens aren't withdrawn. So basically your, your tokens are on, on earth and then you get to planet three, two days later, however long it takes, then you can withdraw your tokens from earth that have been staked there the entire time and deposit them on planet three and take advantage of all of the things on planet three. And then you can take your planet away or take your starship to another planet. And then as soon as you're ready to switch over, you just withdraw your tokens from planet three, deposit them in planet four, and you're good. So basically it's, you're not required to be losing out on your investment while you're traveling. It basically, it just, it opens up a new staking pool for you as you travel. Um, so with 10,000 of 10,000 starships kind of sounds like a lot. Um, when you look at like Ohm's ecosystem and the fact that they have you know, 700,000 people in the ecosystem, you know, 10,000 starships starts to disappear pretty quickly. Yeah, that's yeah. why we have ecosystem, uh, sorry, so that's why we have seasons. So we have season one of the starships being 10,000. Um, we'll have season two that'll release new starships, new functionality. Season two is gonna bring in optional ship battles as a way to, to engage your ship against another starship um, for a chance to win warp. Um, and all of those sort of things are going to be rolling out new functionality is going to be rolling out in different seasons, which again, ins incentivizes people to come back to the ecosystem and to, to continue to participate in it. Right. Um, but starships, because of that, in the first season, 10,000 starships, that's going to go pretty quickly. Um, you know, especially if, if people are getting really excited about the project and really want to buy in, which means that those who, who get in early, who buy these starship parts through bonding, which again, bit creates the treasury, um, and then are, are creating starships of their own, they may be able to get an even bigger ROI as they're selling starships to somebody who wants to buy in but can't because there's not any starships available until the next season. It, of course, it's crypto, right? The, the disclaimer is, it, you know, none of that could happen, right? Starships could be worth $5. I highly, highly doubt that. But, you know, they, nobody knows how it's going to go. But if you look at the, the exclusivity of NFTs, the fact that these starships actually have function, they're not just pretty things that you earn as a little token, but they literally allow you to earn an additional ROI on your staked warp and allow you to travel between multiple places. And, I mean, I, we have... I, I want to share all the cool things that starships are going to do, but basically starships are going to be the keys to unlock a lot of functionality. Um, and again, all of that, all of that functionality comes through bonding, which creates the treasury, which backs the token. So it's just like, it's just a constant series of wins inside of warp that no other project that we've seen in my very biased opinion has actually been able to accomplish kind of all of these yeses all in one go. Now, Joel, you mentioned it here. So why is building starships through bonding so important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to just kind of reiterate, it's it's uh, that treasury is what is what provides that that floor for the project, right? Because as the, as that treasury is being created, that treasury creates that reserve. It's a reserve currency, right? So that it creates that reserve that allows the token to have inherent value. You know, with these other projects, the value, in a sense, comes from sentiment, of course, which is kind of hard to describe, but then it comes from buying and selling behavior. Um, so if, if a project is losing value and a bunch of people are selling, then you have a lot more of one token in the liquidity pool than you do of whatever was backing it. 
with stable coins. So um, we, we're launching with uh, with Dai as our as our stable coin on Polygon. Um, we can look at adding in a USDC or USDT um, backing as well. But Dai right now is going. We're also launching with Mai. So we're an official partner of the Chidao community, and they have the Mai token on Polygon. Um, and they, uh, they we're also going to have a, a Mai backing. So we have Dai and Mai as our uh, uh, stable coin backing the treasury. And that and that treasury creates that that reserve um, that 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 really prevents or really allows investors to come in and say, okay, this isn't just hypothetical. There is literal money, as you saw with with Olympus Dow. You know, there's how much is it as of today? Six hundred ninety six million dollars back in the, the never token. seen I mean, that before in any just, coin. I think that's no, it's crazy, extremely, extremely unique, and I think it's the direction that we need to see cryptos go because one of the biggest problems that banks and institutions have with crypto is that they don't have any equity on the balance sheet to justify their market caps now this changes the game because you can now see wow this company's got 696 million in assets to 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 justify its market cap, which mm -hmm. I think is brilliant. It's great. And this is, I think, the direction that a lot of cryptos need to go if they really want to gain mass adoption and gain investor trust and gain more investor confidence. And I think this is brilliant. I got another question for you. So mm -hmm. you've talked about multiple staking pools. How are you able to offer multiple staking pools? Yeah, so that, you know, of course, over minting is even if with the treasury is involved, if we're over minting, what's the point, right? Because then in a sense that with every single additional warp token that's being generated, um, the value of each one goes down. Um, Dilution. It's, Dilution. it's exactly we're, we're diluting the entire pool, which means that everybody's losing value every time. You know, that's kind of one of the funniest things I've seen about some of these other projects. I won't name them, but they'll do, you know, huge airdrops worth of the token and people are stoked. Well, every single time there's an airdrop, you don't realize those tokens are either being created or being stored aside and just sent to people, which means all the value is dropping. And you don't then want they can that. sell them, which also drops the value. And then they can. Yeah, everybody's like, oh, free. sweet. I just got five hundred dollars. I'm going to sell it. And if you have. Yep. 10,000 people all selling $500 worth of the tokens they got for free. It's terrible. Um, so with us, obviously, with our backing Axion, the long-term staking project, um, coming into here and wanting to do this right, uh, for us, the multiple staking pools um, means that, that in a sense, what we're doing behind the scenes is, although there are individual staking pools that are created that people can travel, the, the balance sheet, that rebase that I told you about, is looking at the ecosystem as a whole. And it's going to determine how all of those staking pools added together are having an impact, an economic impact on the project itself. So every eight hours as that rebase happens, all of the planets are going to be balanced and adjusted to make sure that, they're, that they are in target with the overall inflation or deflation goals of the entire project. Um, and so that is creating a, a sense of security and knowing that we haven't just said, okay, planet three is going to get 100% APY bonus, you know, for 200%, you know, additional APY if you're over there and, and, and not caring about the economic impact of it. Uh, some projects will literally just do that. They'll just be like, okay, we're just going to give everybody 7 billion APY, you know, and you know, because they've made their money, they're going to sell, they're going to get out. For us, having that balance sheet and, and having the, the, the reserve, you know, that, that treasury um, is those two things allow us to be able to make sure that, that we're not over minting or that we're, we're minting within our goals. You know, crypto is a lot, some cryptos are, are inflationary. That's just kind of how they work. And staking does create inflation. But when it's balanced by inflation goals, um, when it's balanced by the treasury that's backing it, and, you know, we have other deflationary metrics that we do. Um, for example, uh, when, when people sell, we're the first, pro we're the first OM project to have a, a, a like a selfie, um, not a, like a selfie, but like a sell fee. Um, and that is 5% of every sell, at least during the launch window, um, is, is going to be immediately burned and sent to the Polygon debt address, which is cool. You can see where that goes. Um, everybody can look at the Polygon debt address uh, and they can see those tokens being sent there. What that 5% sell fee I, it feels so weird to say selfie. What that five percent, you know, burn does is it creates, um, it it allows that token, those gains to drop. It also decentivizes swing traders because that five percent kind of eats into their margin. It decentivizes bots. We're gonna have bot protection at launch, arbitrage protection at launch, which is great. But it also, if somebody comes in and they see that, you know, five percent of their 
uh, of whatever gains they make, you're immediately going to sell. They're not going to send their bots over there because that's can that eats into their margin as well. Um, but that that deflationary aspect um, helps create a, for the token liquidity pool um, a decentivization to sell, at least during kind of that first thing. But because you're getting like for example, if you're buying warp at a twenty percent discount through bonding, um, that means that if somebody you know, buys their warp and they're immediately selling it after their bond period is done, they're making a 15% gain, right? Um, that's still pretty great. That's still, oh, you know, yeah. if, that, if somebody wants to do that, they've already kind of made that thing, but they're going to get an even better gain if they stake and they're going to have the NFTs on top of it. So it, it really does kind of create a situation where we are, we are working as a project to make sure it's not unfair for people who want to swing trade or who want to just hold liquid. That's, you know, that's just how the economy works. It's not a bad thing, but the biggest bonuses, the biggest benefits are going to be for people who bond, who create starships, and then who fly those starships around. And that economic incentivization and the kind of the game theory, the gamification, the whole metaverse, all of that sort of stuff is what is going to help combat any of the sort of long-term inflation or even short-term inflation that's going to come from, um, you know, people who are, are you know, swing trading or that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, that, that might make Joel, sense. I love the project. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about regarding this project before we say goodbye? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you guys are interested, as, as we said, go to warp.bond. Um, as you can see, we have on our website, there's like a top by, top box in the corner that says whitelist or join our whitelist in there. That leads you to the contest. We're giving away 100 starships. You know, each of them are going to fully fueled starships. That's $1,000 worth of bonds that we're giving away. In a wow. sense, it's not token. It's just that's how much you'd have to spend if you wanted to get a starship. Um, you can create a referral link. You can share it with your friends, all that sort of stuff. But you can share confidently knowing that, you know, if you win a starship, you're going to get at, you know, when, when starships are launched, you're going to get the ability to immediately take economic advantage that other people won't as they're still building their starships. But you can also know that we're not giving away tokens. You know, we're not um, we're not deflating the pro or inflating the project immediately after launch with tokens that we've given away for free when really they should be you know backed by something, right? Um, so uh, do check that out. Do check out the contest. Would love to have everybody get a free starship. You know, anybody who's interested, um, come join our Discord. Our Discord's awesome. Um, there's a lot of really excited people in there, and we are announcing new partners. We just announced a partnership with Polypunks. We have Polygon on board, Cheetow. We're announcing wow. tomorrow. Uh, by the time this video releases, we have the Gojira. Um, Gojira NFT series is official partner of Warp, and which means that Gojira freaking badass Gajira starships are going to be in, in the Warp uh, metaverse. So come join, come check it out. We're excited to have you. And this is a, a, a really cool project. Ohm Forks tend to do really well, and they're just clones. You know, this is an entirely new re-envisioning. And so we imagine that Warp is going to be a great opportunity for people who are interested. So thanks for hosting me, man. Appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure. I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, Please. do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, we love to bring you guys undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed projects first. And I believe we are the first to talk about this. You are the you're first one putting this everywhere. Thanks to Joel. And Joel, once again, is the core contributor of the Axion network. So guys go and look at Axion. They're working on so many projects. Axion is working with warp and so many other projects, and they're going to continue to be working on new projects. So stay in the loop. You don't want to miss an opportunity potentially of a lifetime. And we've seen this in cryptocurrencies. You see this big Bitcoin here. We love Bitcoin. We yes. love cryptocurrencies. They are literally changing the world. And we want to make sure that you, the people at home, do not miss a rocket that you could put in your pocket first. Thank you for joining us today, Joel. And I'd love my to pleasure. invite you back anytime you have a new project, love to come back. Any big breaking news, anything new and exciting. We'd love to invite you here first on Rich TV Live so that we can tell the people and share your story and all your exciting new developments as they happen. Awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate you guys. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Joel. Have a great day. Keep up the great work. And for those of you guys that are watching, if you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring in the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Your boy, Rich from Rich TV Live with Joel Erlach, the core contributor of Axion Network and with a new project, Warp. And you can go and find it at warp.bond. Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.